thinking to myself, this is life or death. You're gonna make it or you're gonna die. It started out as a normal holiday weekend for Del Oro High School senior McKenna Kelly and her boyfriend John Hansen. Took the dog to go play. But what the young couple thought would be a fun afternoon trip to Forest Hill took a turn for the worst when their car got stuck in the snow. It started to get snowier. And we tried to pretty much do everything we could in our power to get us back. By 5 p.m. it was getting dark with little food, no water or cell service and just the jackets they wore that day. Reality set in. They were trapped for the night. We tried heating snow to drink water. And we would set alarms for every hour to check the exhaust because it was snowing so hard and if the snow covered the exhaust, we would die in the car. I thought of that from my chemistry teacher. Just before sunrise, John began a five and a half mile trek to China Wall, a staging area for snowmobiles and cross country skiers to try to find cell service. I knew that neither of us were gonna last too long. 30 minutes later, the car broke down, leaving McKenna and their dog Marley with no heat. I decided to put on my snow boots that reached my ankles, they were really small, and hike to where he was. And as it kept going longer and longer, I started throwing up blood and I decided I can't leave the dog in the car. So I turned around, I came back to the car, all the heat was gone and I had to strip my clothing and wrap everything around my legs because they were black and blue and purple and my toes were hard and I had to pee on my legs to make it warm. And that was the most awful thing you could imagine because no one wants to have to pee on themselves and it's awful. And I said to myself like, I can't do it anymore. So I started writing notes to my family because I never thought they would ever see me again. Me, I started writing on the windshields, help, SOS, I'm dying. By now, John had made it to China Wall. He called 911 and first responders were on their way. But due to accessibility issues, it would still be hours before a snowcat could rescue them. Then, another way out emerged. I saw a guy on a snowmobile pass by and I started screaming as loud as I could. He came by, I asked him to take me down to where my boyfriend was and he said, the sheriffs are looking for you. That good Samaritan took McKenna back to camp where plaster sheriffs then jumped into action. They took their jackets off, they were putting it on me. They took off my snow boots and saw that I had frostbite and my legs were going really numb. McKenna was transported by ambulance to the hospital. While it could take weeks or even months for her to fully recover, she and John are just thankful to be alive. Having her in the back of my head, I think that was probably just about the only thing that gave me the adrenaline and the drive to keep pushing. When I was writing those letters, it made me realize like, this is the most like important lesson I've learned in my life and not being able to come home to them would be the most tragic thing. Hmm, harrowing stuff, right? And again, this rescue just happened on Monday. And if you're wondering though about Marley, the dog, John was able to go rescue her that morning. She was in actually pretty good spirits. McKenna, as we mentioned, does have a bit of a recovery ahead. She did have to go back to the hospital last night, and she told us it's been hard for her to breathe, it hurts to walk, and she has some PTSD. But overall, they are just thankful to be alive and to all of those who helped them survive. McKenna particularly wanted to thank her chemistry teacher, Mrs. Lucci, for teaching her about carbon monoxide in cars. But truly, just a remarkable story and a good reminder to always be prepared when you go to the snow.